What's going on guys? John Alder here from tkinter.com and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create custom color themes for custom Kinter and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create custom color themes for custom Kinter. But before we get started, if you like this video, want to see more like it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com and get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube, you get 30% off membership if you're interested. All right, like I said, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create custom color schemes for custom Kinter. And we know right off the bat that custom Kinter comes with three color schemes. You have green, you can see on the screen there, blue and dark blue. Those are the ones you can pick from, but you can actually create your own and it's not as hard as you might think. So that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the sublime text editor and the get bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this custom Kinter series. So check that out if you haven't so far. So I've got the code that we worked on in the last video. I've just renamed it ctk underscore custom color dot pi. It's just that app I was just showing it has a text box at the top and a button and a drop down menu. And you see right up here at the beginning, as always, we've set our default color theme to green. If you wanted blue, you would type in blue. If you want dark blue, you would type in dark blue. We usually use dark blue in this channel, but you know, for now I'm changing it to green just to switch things up a bit. So basically these three themes are JSON files, JavaScript object notation, JSON. Yeah. So if you're familiar with JSON, it's just a basic JSON file and we can take a look at it. In fact, we really kind of need to. So let's head over to the custom Kinter documentation at customkinter.tomshemansky.com. Click on documentation and let's go to colors and themes. And if you come down here, there's a little explanation of this, but you can see here is the dark blue JSON file. So if we click on this, it's just basic JSON. So if we go back to themes here, we could go to the green one. And I'm going to click on this, let's see, copy raw file. We're going to use this in a second. But if we just look at this, you can see there's a basic structure here. Here's CTK, that's the main app. And then here's, you know, the top level window. And then these are just each of the widgets, CTK frame, CTK, CTK button, CTK label, the entry box, the checkbox, switch on and on and on all the way down for all the widgets. And you know, there's not a ton of them because there's not a ton of widgets. But you can see they all have sort of the same format. They have this Python list with two objects. Why is it two? Well, the first one is for light mode. And the second one is for dark mode. If we go back over to our code, you remember, we always set the appearance mode to either dark or light. So that's all that is it corresponds if you picked light, then back over here, these things are the ones that are being activated. If you pick dark, then these are so really, if you want to create your own custom color theme, you just need to create your own one of these files and change these colors, right? Now there are a couple of utilities out there third party utilities that will do this for you. I haven't played around with any of them. Some of them look a little janky, some of them look okay. You can Google that if you want. Uh, as this becomes more robust, as custom Kinter becomes more popular, I'm sure we'll see custom themes pop up. I haven't really been able to find any. Nobody's just created any, I don't think. There, there might be some out there. I didn't spend a whole lot of time looking. So look around for custom Kinter color themes or JSON files, and you may find some. Or you could just come through here and modify the ones you want to modify. And I think that's what we're going to do here. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click this little thing here that says, copy raw file. And we're just going to copy this green.json file. I'm going to show you how to create your own and how to use it in your app right now. So let's head over here and let's go file new file. And I'm just going to paste in all that stuff. Control V or right click and paste. And you can see it's all the same color, which isn't great. So we need to save this file. So let's go file, save as. And what you want to do is navigate to your tkinter directory, wherever you're saving your tkinter file. And I'm going to come in here. You don't have to do this, but I'm going to right click and create a new folder to save this in just because, you know, kind of makes sense to separate it. So let's put it in our themes and let's call this red. And we want to come down here and click J and it pops right to JSON. Let's go red.json. So let's create a red one real quick, right? And when we save it, it changes color and it's a little bit easier to read. Now, we don't just have the colors, we have other things you can change for all the widgets too. So you can change the corner radius, the border width for your frame. 
Uh, for your button, you can change the quarter radius and the border width, right? And then here's all the different things, the foreground color, the hover color, the border color, the text color, the text color disabled. And again, these are the light ones on the left and the dark ones on the right. So if you've been following this series, you're familiar with all these things. We always talk about like the hover color, right? We always talk about the border color, the text color, the placeholder text color. We've gone through all of those things, all of those attributes in these videos. So you should be familiar with them. And then it's just a matter of changing the ones you want. Let's just change a couple of them and play around and see what happens. So let's go to the button because we've got a button in our app and let's look at the foreground color. So we're using dark mode. So it's this color right here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and let's just change this to red. Now we don't want the hashtag there. So just red, or you can use your color hex codes like they're using here, but you know, we can also just use red. So let's go ahead and save this. Now, how do we use this file in our app? Well, let's come back over to our app and up here where we picked green, we well, get rid of that. And all you do is put the path to wherever that file is. So uh, since this is saved in the same directory, we can use a relative path and I can just go theme slash red dot JSON. If you save your JSON file somewhere else, then you have to be explicit. So you have to be like C uh, forward slash whatever forward slash, right? But this custom Kinter file, this Python file and the JSON file are in the same relative directory. So we can just use a relative path like that. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this, head back over to our terminal. I'm in my ctkinter.com directory and let's run Python ctk underscore custom color.py. And when we do, we see the button is now red. Now, when we hover over it, it's still green because we didn't change the hover color in the JSON file, but we did change the foreground color and you can see now it's, it's red. Okay, this maybe seems like a hassle because there's a lot of these things, but what we can do is let's come up here to find and come down to replace and we can paste in that green color code that we found in the button. And let's say we want to change all of them, all of the reds, right? So we can click replace all, it'll go through there and, and replace all of those. Then if we save this file, head back over here and run this guy. Now all the instances of that green will be changed to this red color. Now you'll notice the little button is still green because we didn't change that, but I think you get the idea. And we can play around with this. Let's come back over here and just for good measure, let's add a quick progress bar at the bottom of our app here. So let's go, I don't know, my underscore progress. And this is going to be a custom tkinter dot c t k progress bar. We want to put it in root and we want the orientation to be what horizontal. That looks good. And then let's real quick, just my progress dot pack this guy, give it a pad Y like 20, push it down the screen a little bit. And let's just see if that right out of the box is now red because we changed, you know, all those green colors in the JSON file to red. So let's come back over here, run the sky again. And sure enough, our little progress bar down here is red. So very cool and a little bit of a hassle to have to come through here and change every single one of these things. but. I mean, look at this, not that many. Let's see however many widgets there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then there's some font stuff, right? So 16 of these you have to change and each one has, you know, different things in it that you might want to change. But you know, you could probably do this in a couple hours if you were really into this and you really had your color codes down pat. Uh, maybe we'll make a little utility ourselves on the channel here that does all this for you that gives you like a color palette you can click on and it'll save it automatically. That might be fun to do. Comment in the comment section below if you would like me to build something like that. And maybe if enough of you are interested, we'll build that out. But otherwise, you can just come through here and manually do this and yeah, pretty easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. And be sure to grab your totally free PDF copy of my Kinter Widget Quick Reference Guide book. This thing is awesome, over 150 pages with all the Kinter Widget attributes. Grab your free copy today, just head over to tkinter.com forward slash widget dash book, enter your email address, and I'll send that right out to you. And while you're there, think about membership in tkinter.com. You get all my Kinter courses, all my future courses for one low price. Use coupon code YouTube to get 30% off membership if you're interested. My name is John Elder from tkinter.com, and I'll see you in the next video.